Hello and welcome to Union Station in the heart of downtown Chicago. Today we are going to be taking a look at Amtrak's brand new Siemens Venture coaches on board the newly rerouted Missouri River Runner. Our journey today will see us heading south out of Chicago past Amtrak's Chicago Yard and over the south branch of the Chicago River. From there, we'll head west along the banks of the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal towards Joliet. We'll cover a total of 37 miles between the two cities over a travel time of 50 minutes, with a single station stop in Summit, Illinois along the way. Union Station is one of four major termini in Chicago, but the only downtown station served by Amtrak. The other three are used for Chicago's Metro commuter trains and the South Shore Line. As beautiful as the station is, we really don't have a lot of time to hang around today, as getting to the station this morning took longer than I had anticipated. That being said, we'll have a better look at the station complex in a later video. As soon as we reach the end of the escalators, it's time to kick it into high gear and make a beeline for the Amtrak gates. Our train for today, Amtrak Lincoln Service slash Missouri River Runner number 319, is departing out of gate D. By the time we arrived, however, boarding was nearing its conclusion, so I headed straight out to Track 24 to meet our train. From the moment I laid eyes on them, it was love at first sight. Waiting patiently on Track 24 was our train, with four Venture coaches in tow. You can hear from my very audible gasp and subsequent comments that I was very excited to see these incredible coaches. Now, I had rolled the dice a little bit on this trip. I had no way of guaranteeing that I would see these coaches on any train that I took while I was in Chicago, and wanting the best odds of getting to experience these cars, I booked an out and back to Joliet. For the sake of variety, however, I booked one leg in business class and one in coach, such that if neither train had venture coaches, it would still be an interesting ride there and back. It just so happened that this leg is the one where I booked business class, so we'll head towards the front of the train to take our seat. Where are you going? Uh, Joliet, the business. Business class? Two cars down. Two cars down? All right. Unfortunately, Amtrak has yet to roll out the business class venture coaches, so we'll be seated in an Amfleet 1 business cafe car for the beginning of our trip. We get seated and the doors close, marking our departure from Chicago and on to Joliet. We rolled out of Chicago's Union Station, exiting the tunnels into the morning sun. Waiting in the yard just beyond the station exit in Amtrak's Chicago Yard are many more Venture coaches, including the yet-to-be-seen Business Class coaches. Business Class on Venture coaches will operate in a 2x1 arrangement, with wider seats and additional legroom, much like what is already seen in Amtrak's current Business Class. Although the interiors will appear very different, the seating will be extremely similar to Brightline's Premium Class of seats seen here. With our journey underway, we can finally get up to go check out these incredible new coaches. Passing through the cafe and vestibule, we arrive at the first door into the new cars. The automatic doors open, and we can finally get a look at what Amtrak's new Midwest fleet has to offer. One thing is immediately clear about the new coaches, and that is just how much brighter they are than either Amfleet's or Horizon's. The significantly larger windows, in combination with the brighter LEDs, help to bring each coach to life. First things first, we'll take a look at the seating on board. Seating in coach is operated in the standard 2x2 configuration, but there's still plenty of space between my knees and the seat in front. There's also more than enough space to stretch out beneath the seat or to store your carry-on bags. The seat back pocket is rather small, and it actually isn't a pocket at all, rather an elastic mesh sleeve that your personal belongings can fall right through, so be careful if you plan to use it. 
Each seat includes a large tray table which folds down from the seat in front. The table is super deep and more than wide enough to accommodate the largest of laptops. Plus there's a cup holder which is a welcome addition. Between each seat is a padded armrest, which despite being pretty thin, still provides some much appreciated separation between the two seats. Also in between each seat are two outlets and two USB ports, with one for each passenger. This finally solves the age-old problem of Amtrak's wall outlets being inaccessible to aisle seat passengers. Above each row are two bright LED reading lights, which can easily be turned on and off with these satisfying machined aluminum buttons. Seating adjustments are made through the button on the side of each seat, which reclines the seat back and moves the bottom cushion forward. This allows for each seat to recline without moving backward into another passenger space. As a result of this action, the recline distance is limited to only about 2 or 3 inches, which isn't nearly as much as the 5 to 6 inches seen on Amfleet and Horizon coaches. The seats themselves are comfortable, but I don't think they take the top spot over traditional coach seating seen on Amtrak Midwest's older fleet. The upholstery, however, is a welcome change, with a combination of fabric and faux leather working together to achieve a sleek and modern interior. Speaking of that sleek and modern interior, the interiors are a welcome departure from Amtrak's traditional fleet. The aisles, in addition to the previously mentioned LED strips, include a feature new to any of Amtrak's fleet, the passenger information screens. Replacing the dot matrix displays are multiple screens set at intervals throughout the car, which can display any information that Amtrak desires. Unfortunately, they were off for our journey today, but while in operation will look something like this, as seen in Brightline's Venture train sets. Above each row of seats are smaller luggage racks for personal belongings. The glass bottom is a nice touch, which reflects the light from the windows below, aiding in cabin illumination. For larger bags and bicycles, Venture coaches provide luggage racks at the ends of each car. At this end, either three bikes or many large suitcases and other personal items can be stored, while the other end features a luggage rack with no bicycle space. Walking through to the other end of the car, we can enter the larger vestibule between this car and the next. Here, the bathrooms and loading areas are separated from the passenger compartments by a set of automatic sliding doors, which helps to mitigate sound travel from the walkways between each car. A new addition to Amtrak's fleet are the recycling bins, along with the usual trash cans. Turning around, the doors behind us feature a large window with a stairwell going down to ground level below. Interestingly enough, there are two types of venture coaches that Siemens offer, the two-door and four-door variants. Unlike Brightline, Amtrak opted for the two-door variants, with one door per side per coach. With this comes an adapted emergency exit plan, both of which can be seen here. The only changes, however, are the removal of two of the secondary exits, with one on each side. With the interiors out of the way, it's time to take a look at one of the biggest changes between Amtrak's old and new fleet, the bathrooms. All bathrooms on Venture coaches are wheelchair accessible, with push-button operation for easy access. Pushing said button slides open the automatic door, revealing the amazing Venture bathrooms. A second button inside closes and locks the bathroom, so there's never a need to mess with the door. The bathrooms on board are amazing. Gone are the small and sketchy bathrooms of Amfleets and Horizons, with these brand new facilities here to stay. Each bathroom is huge, with plenty of space to move around in, especially for people with disabilities. The sink and soap are both motion activated, however the soap was either empty or not working, hence the standard bottle of Amtrak soap off to the side. Tissues are supposed to be located just below the mirror, however none were present. The toilet paper, however, was well stocked, sitting alongside the motion-activated toilet flush. Instead of paper towels, Amtrak has opted for the greener route, electing to use an electric hand dryer instead. The toilet itself is very clean and looks significantly nicer than anything I've seen in the rest of Amtrak's fleet. 
Lighting in each bathroom is done through the four LED clusters in the ceiling, with a diffused LED strip running around the length of the mirror. These bathrooms really are a massive step up from Amtrak's past fleet, and I can't wait to see more of these on trains across the US. One feature advertised on these new coaches is improved Wi-Fi. Going through the usual motions, we can connect to the onboard network and see if that's really the case. From what I can see, the network is about on par with Amtrak's Acela service, with an average of 3.02 megabits per second, a big step up from the abysmal 0 to 0 0.5 megabits a second that I usually saw on Amfleet or Horizon coaches. The speeds picked up as we got further from Chicago, hitting a top speed of just under 80 miles per hour. These coaches are actually rated for a top speed of 125 miles per hour, but the highest speed they'll see in regular service on Amtrak is 110 miles per hour on the higher speed lines between Chicago and St. Louis, as well as in Michigan. Having completed our tour of Amtrak's new venture coaches, our train nears our destination of Joliet. We'll save a look at business class for another day, but we can take one quick look at the cafe car before we hop off. The cafe car on board is a half cafe, half business class car, with the curtain acting as a partition between the two. The cafe portion includes the usual bar area, plus a couple tables for passengers to sit and eat. The bar car includes the usual selection of snacks and drinks, and I decided to snag a Coke before we arrived in Joliet. Our train rolls to a stop, and we can step off the train and onto the platforms. The exteriors of these new coaches are just as stunning as the interiors, with their high sides, sleek curves, and stunning Amtrak Midwest paint jobs. The Amtrak Midwest logo makes a return to the middle of each car, a marker not seen on most routes across the US. One thing that I cannot for the life of me understand is why the livery of Amtrak's SC44 chargers do not align with these new venture coaches. Clearly they are supposed to line up but the bottom line of the locomotives is too high, and the swoop at the top towards the end of each locomotive means the top is nowhere near aligning with the coaches. If you know what's going on with the liveries, let me know in the comments below. The last of the passengers board, and the conductors close the doors, the stairs folding up into their cubby below the entryway. With a hiss from the brakes, Amtrak train 319 continues to St. Louis and eventually Kansas City. And with that, it's time to bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be kicking off our adventures in the Netherlands with a first-class ride on one of Deutsche Bahn's incredible intercity express trains from Amsterdam Central to Utrecht. If you want to be around when more videos get posted, hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. If you like the video, drop it a like too. Likes help push my content to more awesome viewers like you, and the more people who like my content, the more trips we can take in the future. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.